Coming back to Coin Surrey's channel is an absolute delight. Where are you at? We have an upgrade coming out on March 13th, a paper from the Coin Telegraph about how to make Ethereum cheap again, and plans to raise block size and cut transaction costs. However, the subject at hand is unclear. Can you think of any main net transactions? The exponential growth of this blockchain has caused problems with its layer 2 scaling solutions. If their figures are correct, the fees for those layer 2s might reach $82 during a bull run. Their aim is that this issue will be resolved with this news upgrade. That Ethereum has achieved such remarkable success certainly plays a role. The fact that this blockchain is popular and has many legitimate transactions is a further perk. Given that scaling solutions are currently encountering problems such as these, is this the optimal long-term solution? I think it's crucial to learn about alternative chains, such other layer 1 smart contract blockchains, because the infrastructure's viability is up in the air. Ethereum will rule the next bull run, I'm sure of it. Second, I have faith in the success of layer 2s. Because I am a person who thinks optimism can solve any problem, I think it will work. Having said that, ultimately. Could you please explain what blockchain technology is? The situation has become really chaotic. Even with the inclusion of these short-term scaling solutions in the Etherion blockchain design, it appears that they will encounter issues. We will ensure that you are well-versed in the Ethereum blockchain and that you require competing chains. My prediction is that Adam's polka-dotted cryptocurrency, Cardano, will start making waves in the market and causing mayhem during the next bull run. Perhaps bad news for Coinbase due to the low Bitcoin ETF. The main point of this piece is that you can invest in Bitcoin in a very safe and low-cost way. Will customers flock to Coinbase instead of, say, BlackRock or another exchange, hurting other companies in the long term? Although exchange fees will have an effect on cryptocurrency in the near term, even without exchange-traded funds ETFs, these fees will eventually disappear altogether. Crypto exchanges, like stock markets, will have to diversify their revenue streams. But for the time being, this will not have any bearing on Coinbase or any other exchange. BlackRock Fidelity's Bitcoin ETF, BTBT, and Fidelity's Bitcoin Trust, FTTC, both broke records for the number of months it took to launch out of more than 5,500 ETFs, 30 years, respectively. Whether or not this was successful is debatable, but Bloomberg Intelligence reports that in the first 17 trading days, BTTC and BLK each raised more than $3 billion. I love everything about this. The adoption of that exchange-traded fund, ETF, marked the beginning of a major historical event. It will be followed by many more crypto ETFs. Next, we will watch to see what occurs. Larry Fink was present in my debut video, where we discussed Bitcoin ETFs, Tokenize.com, BlackRock's plans to corner the fractional ICE industry, and the widespread belief that exchange-traded funds ETFs, are just pools of stocks or assets. However, their true intention is to use this as a way to tokenize all assets worldwide. Your house, Bitcoin, gold, and everything else of value falls into this category. The end goal is to have all of these assets offered to investors in the form of exchange-traded funds ETFs. Envision a life free of material possessions and abundant joy. That is their main plan of attack here. The future is going to be tokenized, the ETF structure is going to be blockchain-based, and it's going to be a very gloomy world. Assets like equities and crypto gold are already experiencing this. Curiously, only around 20,000 out of 5 million XRP ledger accounts have actually used the ledger stacks in the last 30 days. Less than 1% of users are making use of this amazing collection of capabilities. Among the few high-quality assets available for trading is the fact that we do not possess any of the big stable coins. I think it would be quite advantageous if we could acquire one or two of these assets, even though there are others like USDC, Circles, and Tether. More interesting assets and a reliable coin are what we need. Only a few of initiatives are making use of the XRP ledger. But this made me consider the means by which we gain access to the ducks, and I have to admit that Wind software is light years ahead of Toast, my first wallet. The question then becomes, who gets to use the DEX? 
His development of such capability and provision of a great wallet are truly outstanding. I use XRP GateHub to buy US dollars, Euro, and Casino coins, but when you consider the procedure that really employs the DEX, aside from a couple major issues, my viewpoint changes. Beside that, buying an asset could be a pain. For the sake of winning over Twitter users, I went to extreme lengths as to complain about it. According to him, this isn't that hard. His actions of finding the expector currency address, duplicating it, and then swiftly moving it to his wallet are clearly visible. How brilliant. But this is a problem and an uncomfortable thing for the rest of us mere mortals. I see. The idea is to keep you from losing money or expensive possessions due to buying the wrong currency or having too much slippage. However, I can understand how exceptionally talented people could probably whiz through this, but my guess is that the vast majority of people will get annoyed and never use it. Consequently, I think our tools are also important. Seeing Mickey's recovery gives me hope that they can figure out a short-term fix. He jumped in, saying he knew all about that app and wondering why someone would have gone to the trouble of looking through the Solomon docs and the X apps. Users will have to wade through mountains of paperwork and use an app to find this incredibly specific set of functions, which is very unlikely to occur. Having very easy access is also crucial. Therefore, I strongly suggest trying out the Uniswapped app if you've never done it before, no trades are required. But after you've installed it, the main thing you'll see on the interface is a search bar. Use it to find the coin you want to buy, and then click on it to buy it. It is as easy as that, that is all. It is unnecessary to find a trust line and complete all those other laborious stuff. Consequently, I think it's important to use our skills to help bridge the gap between the two conflicting goals of safety and consciousness. However, user-friendly accessibility is also essential. Furthermore, I know exactly when we will achieve a mutually agreeable compromise on the matter. It is intolerable that we only have one enormous time wallet when we should have many more. Possibly more will enter the market to compete, and they are presently developing the application. But right now, the XRP ledger doesn't have the best tools. To use that out-of-date system and log into that toolbox makes it appear like it was made a decade ago. Trust me when I say it isn't exactly the most welcoming thing. There needs to be some improvement, we hope. After that, maybe more people will use the Dux because of its strong set of features. Having said that, it doesn't accomplish anything. As though he doesn't believe the system is great. This is based on the assumption that out of 5 million accounts, only 20,000 really try. Also, it works. Plus, it's incredible. Plus, AMS is a great place to work out all of these issues, so you should expect great liquidity. People won't utilize it, though, if they find it annoying and hard to use. That is my entire point, really. And again, you know, not being critical when someone has done a fantastic job. However, I think we should improve this and make it easier to utilize. That is all I want to convey. In response to his statement about the AFM tragedy, Daniel presented a compelling case. He claims that this group has proven that safeguards are in place to prevent any one entity from having an excessive amount of power. There is nothing else that is more important to him than that. A challenging situation has arisen, the dispute is playing out on Twitter in real time, with people attacking one another. Yes, I think so too. However, that is the reality. That's the way things stand. Even worse, Rippling did not get the result they had hoped for. Also, they had to make adjustments for people who were worried about using the system before it was ready. The responsibility was carried out by the community as a whole, not by any one person. He went on to say that he is quite confident in them because the ensuing Ripple proved they are agile, quick, and can overcome challenges. I share your belief that they are getting ready to unleash their maximum potential here. I am ecstatic about the enhanced capabilities that will be provided by the long-awaited and meticulously prepared modifications. If we make a few more tweaks to this environment, especially to the tools, I think we can make those numbers skyrocket. The most intriguing feature, the XRP ledger, is finally getting there, and I expect its adoption to skyrocket during the next chain bull run.
Additionally, they plan to migrate most of their processes to the blockchain starting with Ripple, which should make the XRP ledger more visible and liquid. Because of it, I think it will be considerably more practical. Feel free to express your opinions in the space provided. Like and subscribe, please. Until next time.